Hi! Today we're going to finish all of these sketchbooks. Recently, I've been on a little bit of an art high. I had this stack on my table for so long. Many of these sketchbooks I've owned for many years and I don't even actively use them anymore. I want to see what I can make if the only rules are just to loosen up and have fun. I don't know if I can tackle all of these, but I'm gonna try my very best, at least. At least these. I know these are definitely more doable. In these four sketchbooks, there's a total of 1, 81 pages. That's almost six pages a day. This one's gonna be, this one's extra credit. This is contestant number one. It's my Nina Cosford, and I've had this since September 20th, 2021. The next contestant. I've had this one since October 21st, 2020. There's a lot of pages left in this one. I believe this is an Etcher watercolor sketchbook. And I started in August 18th, 2022. This one is my moleskin sketchbook. I love this little guy right here. I remember my first drawing in here was of cat creature. Okay, well, the first dated entry is October 9th, 2020. Let's begin! We're gonna do a little Q&A about art and sketchbooking. I asked a bunch of you on Instagram, and by the way, if you're not following me on Instagram and would like to see more of my art, I'm at apple.cheeks. One of the most popular questions that I came across, what do you do if you don't like your drawing or how do you get over the fear of making bad art in your sketchbook? Over the course of this self-initiated project, I literally feel like I made so much quote unquote bad art and it's not necessarily like, I guess subjectively bad, but more so it didn't feel like something that I was proud of making that I could say like, oh yeah, Tiffany Tan made this and I, I wanna show this to the world. It, I kind of like felt part of me didn't really want to show it in the video because I felt just not so proud of it. It's really nice to be able to show things that we like online as well as things that we don't like online sometimes just to keep things a little realistic. I definitely struggled a lot with the whole mindset of a perfect sketchbook after I started social media because I felt like every single spread had to be beautiful and it was something that I unlearned over time to just say fuck it like What's the worst that can happen if I don't make a perfect drawing? And I do end up realizing that after I get that ugly drawing or drawings out of the way, I end up making something that I actually truly like. I took a nap and now I'm back. I woke up at six today, so a little bit struggling. My perfectionism it has never kicked in so hard before. I feel like I just want to go back and rip out all the pages because I don't know. It's okay, it's day one. It's day one. It's gonna feel like this. Yeah. So shout out to Posca. It's not an ad, but they sent me a bunch of markers a while back. I've never seen a Posca marker this big before. It's a brush pen, huh? Since when? There was also a question asking me if I cover the things that I don't like or do I just leave them in my sketchbook? And I usually just leave them because sometimes like weeks later, I'll look back in the sketchbook or even years later and I end up liking it and using it for something else. Something that has also helped me a lot with my perfectionism mindset in my sketchbook is actually quantity over quality. I know the saying goes the other way around, but in my sketchbook, I prioritize just getting a lot down on paper and really fast so I don't have time to really hyper fixate on one singular drawing and making it perfect. Hi. Yesterday got away from me and I did not do my five to six pages of sketchbook work because I was just editing all day. So today I'm gonna try to get 10 pages done. I thought the best way for me to get this done is to gamify it. I made this little spread of the four different sketchbooks and I counted the pages and marked how many pages I have in each so that I can actually see my progress visually and 
let me tell you, I can already feel myself getting hooked. Like just looking at this makes me want to like complete this whole challenge. If you also want to make your own little spread to help you with building any other habits, let me show you how I did it. So the app that I'm using for this is called Notability and I'm actually an ambassador for them, which is super cool. Notability is a very intuitive app that's made for note taking and a lot of students use it and have a really great time using it for studying. I personally like using Notability to make cute little spreads that I can bring with me on the go. Okay, back to the spread that I'm making. I use the highlighter tool and I like that you can choose your own colors instead of using like pre-selected colors. And if you want, you can save the swatch of that color and use it later. And then I just take the pen tool to write over it. I love that it's pressure sensitive. I really love to see the variation in the stroke line. You can also use this for doodling. I'm lazy, so I only drew one line of hearts and then I lasso tooled it, copy and pasted it all the way across the bottom. And I didn't think it was cute enough, so I went in and added a bunch of the stickers that I designed for Notability. Also, if you do end up getting the premium plan, just know that these stickers come built in. And that is a tutorial on how I trick my brain into doing the things that I'm pushing off all day long. If you want to try out Notability, there's a free trial when you download the app, but then if you want to continue it because you like it so much, you can use my code AppleCheeksNB and get 50% off, which is literally like $6.99 a year. That's like a cup of coffee and you get all these really incredible features. Okay, let's try this out. It's a little more like stiff than I imagined. Unwarmed up versus warmed up. The difference. The difference. Another question that I got was, do I do warm-ups? And I don't necessarily call them warm-ups, but throughout this video, I realized that there is a warm-up period for me before I start liking the way that I draw. So I actually got accustomed to making a few, maybe one or two bad pages of drawing, quote unquote bad pages. I don't necessarily do the warm-ups like what I did in college where like we would draw a hundred straight lines or a hundred wavy lines and like warm up that way but instead I'll just give myself like a couple pages or like a few minutes to just draw anything in front of me or something on Pinterest or just something to loosen me up a lot of this for me it looks like just doing studies of portraiture or just objects, still life, stuff like that um, without forcing myself heavily to draw in my style. And as for do I draw every day, I actually do not draw every single day of my life. It really comes and goes with the ebb and flow. It depends on how busy I am or how much I feel like drawing. Sometimes I don't draw for weeks on end and sometimes I'm drawing every day for weeks. And usually I move around my schedule on days where I feel like I don't want to draw at all. I focus more on small business and like admin type things and on days where I feel very passionate for drawing, I clear up my schedule as much as possible and I just let myself draw. But through this challenge, I am also realizing that there's a lot of diligence that goes into your art practice and your craft. And a lot of it sometimes means making art when you don't feel like it and to just practice anyways. But I do want to find a healthy balance where I'm not forcing myself to do something that I don't really want to do, but also staying diligent and practicing on the days where I do have time. Today I've only finished four spreads. Not only, I finished four spreads because four spreads is a lot. But I'm starting to realize that if I keep going at this rate, I will not be able to finish 10. So I'm gonna downsize to smaller ones. But don't be fooled. I feel like smaller sketchbooks, they may be deceiving because sometimes it takes even longer to finish a spread. I think it's time to double wield sketchbooks and try to do two at the same time for the last six. I got a lot of this question and it's how I find inspiration. Um, if I'm completely honest with you, I don't feel inspired maybe 70 leaning almost to like 80% of my time, I don't feel inspired at all. 
And that's something that I really had to come to terms with after I started feeling that way because I wasn't always like this. I remember being heavily inspired when I was younger and I like to, I guess, say that it's because I was more emotional, I had more things going on in my life that were very roller coasterish. so I felt like my way of escaping that was to just go into my sketchbook and draw out all the feelings. And it's not like my life was so tumultuous that I literally just drew all the time because I had so much shit going on, but it was more so of like, you know those feelings of like falling in love for the first time, getting heartbroken for the first time, like all those first times feel so intense. And I think I channeled a lot of that into my art when I was young. So I actually had a lot of like darker art when I was like in high school and maybe like early college. Um, and then as I realized that my life was like starting to mellow out and the first became seconds and thirds and fourths and things stopped feeling as intense emotionally, I was finding it hard to figure out what I wanted to draw and how I wanted to, to convey my feelings. And so there was a period where I literally felt like I, I guess I didn't know what to do. And now I'm realizing that it's nice to just make happy art. And there's nothing wrong with making happy art. Similar to a lot of artists out there, it doesn't matter if you're like visual arts or music or whatever you do. Um, I think a lot of people rely on that heaviness and that hardship to think that that's the only way that they can create art. And I learned that it doesn't have to be that serious. Things don't always have to be serious and things can kind of just be fun and playful and just happy. But honestly, even then, sometimes I still feel uninspired and in those times, I kind of just like to do studies of portraiture. It's something that I have always really enjoyed doing and I've recently tried to incorporate a little bit more back into my sketchbook practice. Um, I stopped doing portraits, I think for a while, just because I, I don't know, I think I was so engulfed with drawing my little characters that I didn't think that it meshed too well with my style, but I'm at a phase where I really do not care if my sketchbook is not cohesive anymore. I'm just trying to have fun and draw whatever the hell I want. Also, I tend to be more uninspired during the winter months just because nothing outside is green and everything is dead, and I'm just typically not leaving the house as much because it's super cold. But yeah, I think my inspiration comes and goes with the seasons as well. I got food poisoning. I thought I was getting better because usually after I do, I stop feeling nauseous at least. It kept happening. Like I would eat a little bit and then it would have, I would get nauseous again. And then I just decided not to eat and I just drink water and blah, blah, blah. And I think I started getting a fever cause I was getting really, really warm. Just took some NyQuil took some Pepto and decided I'm just gonna sleep. And so I pretty much slept at least 20 hours straight. I'm feeling a lot better today. I'm still feeling a little weak. Ugh, I feel reborn. I feel like a baby. The next question is, do you prefer loose paper or sketchbooks? I honestly prefer sketchbooks just because I like everything being in one place and I like knowing that not everything will fall all over the place. I don't have anything against loose paper. I've used more loose paper, I would say, when I'm brainstorming for things. But if I'm just like doodling and sketching, I like it all in one place so I can kind of flip through and look back at things when I'm on the go as well. What is your favorite type of sketchbook? I like a little bit of a thicker page because I like using a lot of inks, a lot of markers. I like anything that does not lead to the other side, so something that's not too absorbent. Um, I like paper that like when you draw with crayon on one side and then draw on the back, I don't like how it transfers to the other side. And I realized that rougher papers make it harder for that type of situation to occur. I'd like to think that I'm more of a hot press person just because I really like when my paints are super crispy at the edge and like super saturated, like it's almost like sitting on the surface of the paper. 
but I have a soft spot for cold pressed paper because I love how absorbent it is and you're able to get these like soft blends with your watercolor as well. I think it really depends on what I'm trying to paint or draw. I like a sketchbook that lays flat. I always do my best to find one that lays completely flat. I would like one that's not too thick so that it doesn't kind of like create an awkward wrist position when you're drawing on it. And I don't like spiral. I am a hardcover girl because I like to bring my sketchbooks out and they get damaged really easily. Today, we're getting out of the house to get some sketching done. Need some outdoor time. Need to remind myself that I always need some outdoor time or else I'm gonna keep wondering why I get so depressed. It's because it's been days since I left home. I'm back. I got three spreads done, but I wanted to talk about my thought process because I feel like the current thing that I want to work on with my art is how to bridge that gap of the way I draw realistically, even though it's not really realism per se, but more like, for example, like when I sketch someone in public, I want to bridge the gap between that style with my more simplified you could say like cutesy style because I feel like every time I draw very realistically and every time I draw very like simplified, it looks it looks like I drew it, like it came from my hand, but it's not necessarily like coming together. It, there's not that much like unity. An example would be like this. I really like this sketch, but part of me just feels like it still looks so technical. I did take a class that primarily focused in ink and like outdoor sketching and like live sketching type of class, which taught us how to shade a certain way with a pen so that it portrays like a certain texture and stuff. And I still feel like I gravitate towards that style, which there's nothing wrong with, but I do feel like it's like that very academic looking style that I wished I worked on more so that it looks more like my style versus like the style that I learned. And like in this way, this is how I feel like handwriting is. You kind of like train yourself over time to slowly make it into your own handwriting, but you start somewhere. Also, maybe I might be overthinking it. I don't, I'm talking way too long. I'm gonna just draw. I'm just gonna just do. Stop thinking and just do. Also, I'm kind of sad because I opened the sketchbook so many times that the binding is just falling apart in certain areas and I'm wondering if I should go in and like tape it back together or fix it somehow. Another question is what is a affordable and good sketchbook to start with? I personally think that a good affordable sketchbook really depends on the person. I feel like when I was in college and I didn't have as much money to splurge on like really fancy sketchbooks. I found that when I did splurge on the expensive ones like moleskin, I would often be more hesitant to like draw on it because I felt like I had to make it my perfect sketchbook since it was so expensive. And in that way, I was not allowing myself to just like draw more. So I would just say, if you have that perfectionism inside of you, get like the cheapest sketchbook, but one with nice enough thick paper. I would say any multimedia type of sketchbooks will do. I would personally go for the Nina Cosford one. We at the library. I'm with Lewis. Next question is, do you number your sketchbooks? I don't number my sketchbooks or my pages, I date them. I treat my sketchbooks as if they're like journal entries and I always like to date them so that when I flip back through them, I can see like, oh, I drew this five years ago. Oh, I drew this 10 years ago. And it kind of like shows me my progress versus like, I have some sketchbooks when, from when I was really young and I forget to date them and I'm like, when did I draw this? Like, I don't remember when this is from and it kind of bothers me a lot because I will never know when I drew them because my short-term memory will never allow me to remember these things. Next question is my favorite art materials and I feel like my favorite art materials are always in rotation but they always remain 
the same throughout the years. I really love markers and in markers I would say for paint pens, Posca marker is one of my favorites. I use so many of their paint pens and I have them in like all different sizes. I recently come to love the mop tip one which is like really thick and I think it's for graffiti art but I just love how loose it is and I use it in a more dry brush technique versus like a really saturated tip that's full of ink. Another brand that I really like for markers is Tombow Markers. I like anything that has a tip that's super flexible where I can fill a big space really fast but also have a fine tip for doing detail work and there, it's like double-ended and also the brush tip pen is like so good at keeping its shape over the years that I have no complaints. I've also been using a lot of Arteza markers. I find that they're really good for that um, like highlighter color for some. And I just like how one end is super fine tip. It's like even more fine than the Tombow marker. I like using Pentel sign pens for line artwork and Prismacolors for my color pencils. He's doing all of my work for me. I can retire now. It's okay. I'll carry on the, the, mm. the channel. Okay, thanks. With this. Next question is how did I develop my characters? Honestly, I wouldn't even call it developing my characters. I think they're just like little doodles that I've done throughout the years and sometimes I just find myself doodling the same creature or character over and over again and it just becomes, I guess, my character. But it's not something that I actively like try to design. It's literally just doodling from everyday life, finding something that sticks, and I just continuously use it because it just feels like a part of me. It just feels like a little little bean that I created. I have a pimple right here. It hurts. It's not pimple. So, I didn't actually continue the challenge too much on the trip. I got to draw a little bit while I was waiting in the airport. I want to show you the pages that I did do when I was at the airport. I had a lot of fun doing this blue spread. Not a fan of this. It was a picture of Earl. Some random sketches, honestly. I got really bored and tired and my drama mean was kicking in. So I was feeling really sleepy and drowsy. And just some, uh, some notes of ideas that I wanna do. What are some tips for drawing creatively and making your own style? The way to keep me more creative is I try to use different art materials and I try my best to make those mistakes that are good mistakes. Like the ones where your paint drips a certain way and it just like happens to be the most beautiful drip ever or the way that two colors mix naturally through like watercolor or if you accidentally make like a really thick stroke but it's like a nice dry brush stroke like those little quirky mistakes always like make a piece look so fresh i think if you're drawing the same things over and over again throughout like many years of your life or drawing in the same style sometimes it could get a little bit mundane and you can start questioning like oh, do i still want to draw like this like is this even me anymore at least i personally went through that and it was very hard to get out of it it sometimes makes the whole process feel a little bit robotic and almost like it was pre-programmed into you are you gonna draw the thoughts yeah. Doesn't it look like I matched the claw? Yeah, it's part of it. We're drawing on your own skirt. I think it also helps a lot when you change up what you're familiar with. So sometimes I like to scale up on my drawings, maybe do like a huge painting um, or a larger sketchbook or sometimes even shrink down into like a small pocket sketchbook and kind of like limit myself with the tools that I use. For example, like when I went to Taiwan, I didn't want to carry too much art materials on me and I found that like I was really having so much fun with just using a simple pocket sketchbook and all I took along with me was a brown Muji pen and I think when you kind of reduce yourself to the bare minimum, you get to like experiment a lot with your style because you're not focusing so much on colors. Another thing that you can try out is drawing things from like different perspectives or drawing things from different angles than you're used to. Um, if you draw very characterized like me, 
you probably often feel like everything's very like frontal, like everything's super flat, but I actually tried drawing things from different angles and I realized that there's so much more you can do, even with 2D, to make a composition more interesting or to make something look more dynamic. And besides changing up all of that kind of stuff, you can also change up your color palette. I, for a while, felt like my color palette was very similar in every single one of my pieces just because I would always naturally gravitate more towards this certain pink that I really like to use or this certain green that I love using for leaves and stuff. And then I realized that like, I wanted to experiment more. I felt like all of my paintings and drawings were so saturated in color and I never really experimented with a little bit more duller colors or darker colors. I just like naturally would always outline things with a black pen, but just like subtle differences like outlining something with a brown pen instead. This just kind of reminds me of my recent trip to Austin where Notability sent me there and we also did like a rug tufting workshop. And because when you're using like fabric and yarn, you can't really mix the colors because the colors are usually set. And we had like a choice of, I think 10 different colors. So like pretty standard colors of the rainbow instead of naturally just like always going for that teal, that bright saturated teal color that I always use for leaves. I ended up trying out using navy blue instead and it just gave the rug such a more different feel than what I'm used to making and I really liked that and then now I think in my art I'm really attracted to that dark navy blue color or like dark brown colors and integrating that more into my practice. These little shifts in your practice can really inspire you to try new things and to keep the whole process very experimental. Do you use a sketchbook as rough work before a final piece? I would say most of the time for a final piece, I do sketch it out beforehand or I reference my sketchbook for a final piece, but there are times where I kind of just like freehand it and just like want to be spontaneous and I don't want to pre-plan a piece. But I do have to say every single time I do that, I end up really not liking the way it goes because it just feels so like, it just doesn't go the way that I imagined it to go. Like the colors are like all over the place and I just feel like I'm just guessing each step of the way. So I am, a heavy pre-planner, especially for paintings, because canvases are not cheap, and every time I mess up a canvas, I get kind of sad, but the good part about it is you can always repaint over and re-gesso over a canvas and reuse it again, but it'll just have like a nice texture over it. <laughs> so silly. It's technically day 12 and I'm done with three entire sketchbooks and I have one more left. So this is one of the sketchbooks that had the most empty pages in it left. Um, I filled out a few of them, but there's still a good chunk, seven pages a day for four days. And hopefully I'll be done with every single spread. But I'm done with these. Good night. I'm getting to the point of this challenge where I don't have that resistance anymore. I've like let go of not wanting to just start and just like pull out my art materials and start my sketching for the day, but also doing like five to 10 spreads a day has been taking up so much energy. And I realized that doing it at the end of the day actually works better for me because I don't want this to take away from my main stuff. I don't want to put like too much thinking in the sketchbook. I am a little bit running out of things to draw, which has been a little bit of a challenge. I think I've been doing a lot more studies. So now I'm gonna do more doodling. 
The last question is what is your favorite and least favorite part of your sketch process? I think my favorite part is just when I have no goal in mind of like what I want to draw but more so just letting the pen do its thing and just completely let go and start doodling. That's like my favorite part and I love when I get like so consumed into it where I don't even realize that hours have passed and I'm still sketching away. And I kind of really like that stream of consciousness type of drawing because I sometimes come out of it with drawings that I really enjoy and other times even if I don't come out with anything I really enjoy it's also a great way to just like get warmed up and ease myself into bigger projects. Another one of my favorites um, is probably just like being able to try out new things and it's a sketchbook so it's like a very low stakes area. It's a place where you can just play and have fun and let go and let whatever happen happen. I also kind of find it really interesting that the thing that I develop eventually into a bigger product, for example if I'm like designing a product, it usually comes from like the smallest, ugliest little sketch in my sketchbook and then it slowly evolves into that final thing through like rounds and rounds of redraws and refinement. But being able to like go back and look at the progress of that one thing is one of my favorite parts. Like it's kind of like a little documentation of my life, my progress, and all of my projects. I was trying really hard to think of my least favorite part of my sketch process and I could only think of this one for right now, but it's when you're like making a sketch that you absolutely love and it's going so well and then you grab a marker that you didn't know was like running out of ink and then once it touches the paper it literally feels like chalk on a chalkboard like I'm cringing so hard from that feeling and there's always a time and place for really nice dry brushing but this is the type of like dry marker that just doesn't like it doesn't even do a nice dry brush anymore like the tip is just not great and it's not enough ink to even look like anything that's one of my least favorite experiences another one that's related to art materials um, is when you're using like a paint pen and then you use it so much to the point where like the paint isn't really in the tip anymore and then you have to like press down and get more paint onto it but then you don't really have a loose piece of paper so you just decide to do it on the side hoping that it's not gonna like overflow but it always overflows and then paint just kind of like drips down into the spine of the sketchbook and then it proceeds to like bleed over to all of the other pages that's also one of my least favorite, yes I'm very salty about that. I think I've answered a majority of the questions, so I'm just gonna start freestyling things to talk about. I really felt like I popped off from like this point going forward. Um, one of my favorite sketches has to be the ones that are done with watercolor as well as the Arteza markers and pens. I probably should have included this in the art material section, but you know what? We're gonna be a little bit unorganized. So for the watercolors here, I actually used to use a lot of Winsor & Newton type of watercolors and the tray that you see in most of these shots, that's like a Winsor & Newton watercolor palette that I got in Italy back when I studied abroad there many years ago, maybe like seven years now. And recently I decided to add a few more different um, brands in there, but one of my favorites that you see in every single shot that I'm doing watercolors in, it's pretty much from Little Reverie Studio and it's an Etsy shop. They make their own handmade paints and I just love their paints. There's something about it that makes my whole drawing process and painting process so fun. Um, I think it's because they have like these bright neon shades and the way that the watercolor feels, it's it's borderline kind of like gouache because of how pigmented it is and how creamy it feels on the paper. So if you're looking for some watercolors, go check them out. They're literally my favorite. I don't think I've used any other watercolors so far that kind of give me that same texture because I really love opaque paint. 
um, but I'm not quite a gouache person. I just feel like gouache is a little too thick. The watercolor pans that I get from Little Referee Studio is a pretty good like in-between of watercolor and gouache. And their colors are so, so cute. There's one that I have, it's that pretty bright neon pink looking one, and they call it Peach Pop. Like that's such a cute name for a watercolor tray. Okay, honestly, I've been talking so much about sketchbooks and materials and all of that that I literally cannot think of a single thing to talk about anymore on this subject. Maybe I've just been sitting on this video for way too long, but I'm just gonna update you all on what's going on and what I've been working on behind the scenes. So aside from just, you know, dilly-dallying around and like doing the maintenance side of running my business, which means a lot of just like emailing and editing and inventory and stuff like that, packing orders, um, I think I'm ready to start designing new products again. I already told my patrons this because they always get early access to everything I do and they get to see what I'm working on before all of you guys get to see it. So if you want to support me on Patreon, this is your sign if you want to know all the top secret things that I'm doing. But I did take kind of a long break from producing new products. I think the last time that I actually worked on making something for the shop, the main shop, was probably like almost Oh, no, it was definitely over a year ago. I think the last things that I ever manufactured was the tulip plushies as well as the tote purses. And that felt like yesterday, but also it felt like a lifetime ago at the same time. Oh, I'm literally on the last the last few pages. I think I only have 12 more spreads, which is crazy. I blacked out and now we have like almost four sketchbooks completed. Maybe I should ask Instagram what I want to draw. And maybe it'll make it easier on me. I always love a good little Instagram sticker challenge. It's posted. We're gonna come back in a few hours. Whether or not you all are aware of this, um, but I did, I guess, intentionally take a break away from the store because I was just feeling a little bit burnt out from the business end. I think I just spent so many years kind of just taking my art and making it into a product that I kind of felt like I was like dissociating from my art and just like everything I was making had to become a product. So that's why I ended up really liking limited edition drops because I would only really have to focus on designing one or two things that I would sell throughout the year or two years. And I'm happy to say, I think throughout the sketchbooking process and just overall feeling a lot more energetic after traveling and taking a break and just like being able to explore more of my outside passions that don't relate to you know, my job and YouTube and all of that. I have a new idea that I kind of want to manufacture. I'm not going to spoil it because I still haven't even sketched it out. I, the way that I came up with this idea was literally, I drank too much caffeine and then um, usually when I keep drinking caffeine till after like 3 p.m., I have a very hard time falling asleep. So I literally will try to sleep at like 12 but then end up laying there for three hours. And in that like down period where I'm trying to sleep, my brain is just like actively thinking. And because I'm not distracted from my cell phone or from my work stuff throughout the day, I just like come up with a bunch of ideas and I'm just like on this high of idea generating. And I literally just like every like five to 10 minutes, I would just like turn the lights back on, get on my phone and then do like really ugly finger doodles into my notes app. So they've yet to become like a nice representation of what I want them to be. Um, they're just like really ugly drawings right now. And this is what I was talking about with the whole like, when I make new products, the first drawing is always just so ugly, but not to get your hopes up, this next idea, 
has me by the throat. And I feel like once you guys see it, you may have the same reaction. At least I hope you will, because I don't think I've ever been so excited for an idea in my entire life. And I can tell that it's something I will actually try to make because I usually have a bunch of ideas, but if they're not if they're not good enough for me to want to manufacture and produce them, I, I probably will forget about it within like a day or two, but I created this idea half asleep a week ago and it's still been on my mind every single day when I wake up. So I think, I think it'll be a thing. It'll be a real tangible thing soon. It's one of those products that are really in alignment with what I have been interested in lately. So if you've been keeping up with me, you could be putting your guesses out there. But I think because it's in alignment with my current hobbies and things that I'm obsessed with, it makes it just all the more fun to think about and to fantasize about. And um, yeah, I'm not gonna say too much, but think about like, storage and accessories and something plush potentially and that's all i'm gonna give you and if you want to know more in the future you should go to my patreon page yay i was able to blab on till the end of the video thanks for literally staying here for like almost a whole hour straight She's done. She's done. That was the most hectic two weeks of my life. Did I enjoy it? Yes. But also I felt like I was in a panic every single morning I woke up. It's cool because watching back the video now, I could really see in the beginning, I was really, really stiff and I was kind of finding it hard to get into a rhythm with drawing. But by the end of it, it flowed so naturally and I feel very warmed up. I'm gonna show you really quick the spreads that I felt like I had that aha moment. One of my most favorite. I love how loose I was able to warm up with it. So in this one, I really like the way I drew this cat. These flowers, and it continued onto this page. This one, I love him. He's just a long, long boy. This kitty, right here. This one I really like. I really like this guy. <laughs> These two are just so stupid silly. I'll just throw them in. They're just like silly. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later. Bye. Can you tell I'm a heart? Does that look like a heart? Bye.